what we dreamed about. We talked about this when we both lived in LA, moving back to the South and getting a really nice regional theater company together. And uh, so I said, I'm in. Cool. And then I had to rush home and make all kinds of excuses to my wife about how I had just promised to spend six weeks <laughs> in Bell Buckle every year. Oh yeah, quite a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us about your role this year, at least the role that you can tell us about. I'll I tell you about you more than one role. I'll tell you about <laughs> one of my roles. Um, <laughs> one of my roles. A GN is, I like to think, the most thankless role in the Shakespearean canon that actually does more than carry a spear. It's all exposition. Um, it's a difficult role to do, especially in a comedy, because you have the only non comedic material in the play. It's important material. People, if people don't know the setup, if they don't know what's happening, they're totally lost for the whole play. So it's important material. And when Lane first said, "Well, I'd like you to do a GM," I said, "Really? I'm not a GM?" He said, "Well, I have something else in store for you too." And I said, "Yeah, but a GM? I don't, I don't know. It's kind of a waste of an equity contract, you know." You could, and he said, "No, I really want you to do it." I said, ah. I don't know, that two pages of exposition, that long monologue, he said, well, you don't have to learn that. What? You know, Matt, yeah, Matt Fulton has written a song. He said, oh, I'm in, because I love Matt's work. Matt does tremendous work with music. And I said, well, then I'm in, sure. And I've loved it. I've actually had a lot, a lot more fun with it than I even thought I would. Now, I see from your biographical information that you also collect comic books. Yes, among <laughs> so other that, things. That yes. piqued my interest, loving comic books, too. What is your most valuable Probably the most valuable comic books I have uh, would be Secret Wars number 8 and Amazing Spider-Man 252, because both of those, those were the first two instances of the black costume, which became the symbiote, which became... Uh, right. 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 So, and of course, I have the entire unopened, still in the original wrappers, <laughs> Death of Superman series. Oh. Every, but they made so many of those, they actually don't have the work that you would think they would have. Right. Yeah, I can understand that. What about your favorite? You know what? I was a Marvel fan for a long time, and, and then it just sort of, I found myself switching, and I'm now. I'm now a, a big DC fan. I follow all the Batman series. I follow. Uh, I don't, don't follow Superman that much, but I, everything ba that Batman does, yes. I follow. Great. He's my favorite character. Me too. Okay, so if we were to happen by your man cave, I understand you have one. Mm -hmm. What would we find there? You, you'd find a Jane Cobb hat. Which any firefight plan knows immediately <laughs> what that means. <laughs> yes. See, oh, that's your they got to be a firefighter. Fire fire. Yeah, yeah. Jane Cobb hat, uh, which is actually sitting on top of my V for Vendetta mask. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, saw. I have a, I have a, a, my entire dragon collection is in there. I collect dragons. I have lots and lots of dragons. Uh, you would also find the. Uh, the prop bottle that I used when I played Sir Toby Belch in Twelfth Night at the Nevada Shakespeare Festival. You would find uh, one of my bonsai plants, the only one I have that can be kept indoors. And uh, just lots of geek stuff, lots of geek stuff. A bat plant hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I understand that you are also an ordained minister in real life. Yes. So, <laughs> looking back on your career and even your current roles, um, are there certain roles that you've had that have, um, more than others, perhaps allowed you to express your faith? I mean, I've played, I've played ministers and priests, a future haggler, of course, and, and others, but yeah, I directed a production of Creation of the World and other business, but I, it's interesting because somebody asked me this question or a similar question and it turned into a thesis paper for his, for his project because I consider theater to be sacred. Uh, oh. We are doing something, people come to the theater and they, maybe they didn't have a good day. Maybe they haven't had a really good week. And if for two hours, we can take them away from that. That's something holy, that's something, that's something that, you know, it's, maybe it's not spiritual, mm -hmm. but for that period of time, they've forgotten everything. For that, whatever's been going on with us as an actor or an actress who's working on a play, no matter what kind of week we've had, for two
two hours, we get to be someone else. Mm -hmm. Someone who doesn't have those problems, who doesn't have those worries, those mm -hmm. thoughts on their mind. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is all kind of sacred. Like the Apaches said, you know, any place you gather in a spirit of love and to lift people up is a sacred space. So I actually consider the, the stage to be a sacred space. And I treat it that way. You wouldn't know that from watching me on stage with some of the antics <laughs> that I pull, but I do. Okay, and I know you've also worked as an animal trainer. Yes. Like as in dolphins and whales and other things, other aquatic creatures mm -hmm. like that. So what made you leave that work? That sounds like a lot of fun. I, I, I actually, well, I started training at Opryland USA here in, mm -hmm. in Nashville, not far down the road. And then I became a whale and dolphin and sea lion trainer at Mystic Marine Life Aquarium. Mm -hmm. And from there went on to be the first animal behaviors on staff in a zoo in the United States at the uh, New York Zoological Society, the Bronx Zoo. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually, my, I had actually not applied for that job. I'd applied for the job of a part-time keeper because I wanted to have a part-time job while I started to get back into acting. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work out that it was a part-time job. After I accepted it, I found out it was a full-time oh. big position. I was uh, flight training Indian fruit bats and barn owls for the World of Darkness exhibit. And somebody from the New York Post wanted to do an article on it. So we were being interviewed in my office. We were doing the interview. And uh, I said, do you mind if I call my answering service for a moment? He said, no, not at all. So I called my answering service, and he heard me taking down information that I had an audition for a Woody Allen film. Oh. And he said, uh, so you're auditioning for a Woody Allen film? Are you an actor? And I said, yeah, yeah, I am. And so uh, <laughs> he then said, well, what else, have you, what else have you been doing? And I said, well, you know, I have a nightclub act in town, uh, you know, Shock and Jerry. And he said, you're the Jerry in Shock and Jerry? <laughs> okay. I said, yeah. So when the article came out, it says, you know, animal t actor moonlights as animal trainer, oh. which did not go over well with the folks at New York Zoological <laughs> Society. So I didn't really have a choice about ending oh. that career. And it was the best thing that happened for me, because right after that, I, I got my first really big uh, job and, and joined the Screen Actors Guild, which I've been a member of ever since. And actually, I'm, I'm on the... Uh, the council for North and South Carolina mm -hmm. through through the Florida branch and, and on a what, couple of national committees mm -hmm. with Screen Actors Guild. What was the Woody Allen film? The Woody Allen film was Stardust Memories. Okay. Oh, okay. I've seen a few of those, but I'm not familiar with that. Well, if you watch it and you watch really close, you can see my nose for about five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> okay. And that was your launch oh, to yeah, yeah. stardom. No, that wasn't it. I, I actually got my, uh, my guild card from doing a uh, National Car Rental Commercial. Oh, okay. Great. Okay, so what is your next project for big or small screen? Actually, as soon as I, I leave here, I'll, I'll, I'll drive home on uh, the Monday after we close. I'll have all of Tuesday off, and then Wednesday I go right into my own production company. I, I have to uh, be doing Murder Mysteries at the House of Blues in Myrtle Beach five nights a week. Wow. What do you do when you're not acting in some capacity? When I'm not acting and not looking for more acting work, uh, I, I do bonsai. Mm -hmm. I love to fish. I don't fish as much as I would like. But I'm sure it's very relaxing. And, and bonsai mm -hmm. is relaxing, very time consuming. Uh, um, I read. I watch TV. Keep up on what's going on. Uh, so that's basically it. I just veg. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. Oh, Anything it's been else my you thing. want to add for us? I can't think of anything. Okay. Well, great. We'll let you get to it. Oh, great. He's got a show tonight. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.